Hey guys, this is a quick video just to talk about convergent and divergent integrals. Uh, these are specifically improper integrals that have a constant lower bound and this infinite upper bound, uh, usually with an infinity or sometimes reversed maybe with a negative infinity. Uh, you can reverse the arguments that we're going to make here. So typically there's two ways to look at these. One is with the replacing the bound type of idea. You can replace this upper bound with, say, a constant like b. Take the limit as b goes to infinity, and then just see if that limit exists or does not exist. And if it exists, you would say I'm convergent. You'd have a specific value for that integral. If it goes out to infinity or the limit does not exist for some other reason, reason then you would just say that this is divergent. Uh, this limit does not exist and so this integral is either infinite or just a non-existent value. Uh, the other way to look at it is with a graph and we'll go ahead and take a look at the graph here and see how that looks. So specifically we're going to be looking at 1 over x to the n and kind of considering what happens. Uh, would it be divergent? Would it be convergent? I'm going to start with n as a really small value, say like 0.1. And if you look at this graph, say from 1 to infinity, obviously I can't go all the way out to infinity, but we'll, we'll kind of think about what would happen as you go out toward infinity. So I start here at 1, and I have a lot of area under here. And the function is getting smaller, but not super small. So there's a lot of area that's going to accumulate. And we might think, you know, if I zoom out even more, that... Yes, this is getting small, but it's still pretty close to one. I still got a lot of area coming out, even as I head out toward infinity. So this is probably going to be divergent, uh, just adding up a whole lot of area as you head out toward infinity. On the other hand, if I make this n bigger, let's say closer to three, you can tell that curve gets closer to zero a lot faster than before. So I'm still going to get smaller and smaller values, but now those smaller values approach zero a lot more quickly than they did when the n value right here was, was really small, like 0.1. So we could say maybe even zoom in a little bit more on this one and just see uh, when I'm at 1, my function value is 1, but it really decreases quickly. I'm probably not going to get a lot of area here past 5. So we may expect this to be a convergent integral. There's some area here that accumulates, but past a certain value, there's not going to be a whole lot more accumulation. So this may be convergent. The question you really want to ask yourself now is, is there a borderline, say, where I may have uh, switched to convergent from convergent to by divergent or vice versa. So is there some, say, x to the n value in between where maybe I'm convergent over here, divergent over here, and there's some sort of borderline that might happen in the middle? And the answer to that is actually yes, there is a borderline, and it happens to be right here where n is 1. So 1 over x to the 1 or just 1 over x. So this is the borderline that you're looking at for a function being either convergent or divergent. I'm going to go ahead and graph that right there. And now when I change, so if n is bigger than 1, so I got 1 over, say, x squared or x to the 1.62, whatever it may be, as long as that function stays under 1 over x, this is going to be convergent. Now, I don't know exactly what value it converges to, but I do know it would be convergent. If, however, that n is smaller than 1, so in other words, I get a graph that's bigger than this 1 over x uh, with this smaller exponent of n, then this is going to be divergent. So anytime your graph is above this 1 over x, uh, you're going to diverge. This happens to be, if it's 1 over x to the n, smaller values of n right there. If it increases the n and 
which decreases the graph under that one over X, then that's gonna be convergent. So this is kind of your borderline test case where you can tell either I'm divergent if it's up here the whole time as I go out to, to infinity or maybe convergent if I stay under that line as I head out to infinity. Uh, if you wanna see some uh, test cases with the calculus and algebra worked out, here's a few. Uh, so this one, I have 0.5 as my n, and you can see what happens as you replace that b, take the limit, uh, this negative 0.5 is gonna bump up one. So 0.5, divide by the 0.5, I get a two. Then I take my limit, Really what's gonna happen here is you get this root and roots are gonna increase and go out to infinity as this B goes to infinity. So anytime you're replacing these, say smaller values than one, you'll end up with this negative value that's smaller than one. But when I take the integral, power rule says that goes up above one. And then I get these roots that end up being just infinity as you take the limit as you go out to infinity. Uh, however, if it is, say, bigger than 1, like 2 or 3 or even 1.1, something like that, what's going to happen when I take the integral is this will be, say, x to the negative 2. So you get this kind of negative exponent in the power rule. And then when I increase it by 1, it stays negative. And so I end up with these fractions, like 1 over b in this case, or you know, 1 over b to some power, if it's another number that's right there. And when I take that limit as b goes to infinity, this term goes to zero. So that fractional term goes to zero. We're left with some constant. That constant will be different depending on what your bounds are, what your function is, things like that. And then you just get some constant at the end. So that's a convergent case. Right in the middle is sort of this borderline for our power rule, this 1 over x. So 1 over x, remember, doesn't fall in that nice power rule, sort of bump the exponent up one, divide by one, or divide by the exponent, because you're going to get a zero when I take that x to the negative one right there. So remember, one over x, integral, it's natural log, absolute value of x. We're positive here, so I don't really need the absolute value. But when I plug in those bounds, the natural log of b, natural log of one, that'll be a zero. So we're just looking at what happens as b goes to infinity to the natural log of b. This will head to infinity. So if, if you're not sure you can graph it, uh, you get that kind of curve that goes up and to the right, grows, but grows very, very slowly. So this is where the border is going to be of these 1 over x to the n type of cases. Uh, so this would be, again, divergent just because the natural log does grow as you head out toward infinity. So you do get an infinite value there, but it's one of the slowest growing functions, these natural logs, or uh, just any log in general right there. So that's kind of the idea is this is gonna be sort of the, the borderline case that you can look at for either convergent or divergent being above or below that curve. Now, before we finish this out, just one other thing I wanted to mention. Let's say we have, let me go ahead and hide this curve real quick. Uh, let's say we have something like this. Y is x squared e to the negative x. Now, this curve goes above 1 over x for a little while and then comes back down again. Uh, and if, say, I was going from 1 to infinity, I would want to know, does that converge or diverge? So really what you want to ask yourself is, is there some point where after that number, I'm always less than 1 over x? And in this case, the answer is yes. After, say, 5, I'm always going to be less than that 1 over x. So this is going to converge because I'm smaller than that borderline 1 over x. Now between 1 and 5, I might be taller. So this will give me some finite value under that curve that I can approximate or find the exact value if I really want exact value. But there's some finite value between one and five for that area. And then after five, there's another finite value that's gonna converge. And I can just add those together to get my, my convergent value. So just because it goes above for some part doesn't mean it's not convergent. 
uh, you're really looking at is there some number where I'm always going to be under, always going to be over as I head out to infinity. So that's uh, sort of what you're looking at. So, so don't let this sort of intermediate front value fool you. Uh, really what you're looking at is over time in the long run, what is going to happen compared to that one over X? Am I going to be above or below the entire time? So anyway, that's kind of a graphical look at these convergent divergent integrals, how you can kind of tell the difference. If your function is smaller than one over X uh, for some value of C, then you're going to be convergent. If it's larger than one over X or actually equal to one over X for some value of C out to infinity, then this integral is going to be divergent. So. Hope that helps uh, just testing the difference between convergent and divergent and um, let me know if you got any questions.